it's Anya here and I'm back with another video for Ophelia Talks and today I am here to show you how to make this wonderful shopping bag. Now the shopping bag is just created on the basis of a bought ute shopping bag but the colours and the finish in black just make it so striking. I used this bag recently when we went to a yarn fair and of course this was the perfect bag to have with me. It was roomy for all my samples and of course for my bottle of water and things like that. So in today's video I will be showing you how to make the square, how to assemble the panels and of course how to attach it all to the actual Ute shopping bag. So come on, let's get started on this shopping bag. So what do you need? So I went into my leftovers and I found all these tiny amounts. I even had some smaller ones but obviously I have already started making some squares so those have already been used up because I was careful to see which row I could use it on. So if it was a little bit I used the you know the, the inner one and if it was a little bit more I used a bigger round. So those have already been used up so that was very very useful. And I also have a number of bigger balls. Now the reason for that is because I wanted in particular a really bright color palette. So I added to the balls that I already had, I added this one which is um, Aspen, um, Fondant and Turquoise because I just wanted that, you know, that colorway. So I wanted that to, um, you know, come out. So that is what I am using. So yes, you know, use any colors that you have in your leftover stash. The tiny amounts even work because you can use those for the first few rounds of the square. Now, of course, then you will need what I have here, a base shopping bag. So this is one of those shopping bags that you can buy at least in the UK, because we're not allowed to use sort of, you know, the throwaway plastic bags anymore. So the shops offer these ute bags. They're a really nice size. There's good depth to them, a good width, so you can put all your shopping in there. And so, of course, you reuse them time and again. So I sent my husband out to buy this bag. It doesn't cost very much, maybe two, three pounds, something like this. Um, and this one is from Marks and Spencer, and it's a plain one, which is great. Uh, but, yeah, we have our craft and yes let's try and embellish this plain bag right um now the thing is this one in particular has black handles so i am going to finish my design with all my bright colors here with black so that it coordinates with the handles you know me and coordination you know <laughs> coordinating colors that's what it's all about right so i am using two balls of black of starcraft special dk so that i can coordinate it with the handles now let me give you the measurements of this bag um the thing is with these bags and our squares that we make it never works out <laughs> uh, whichever how many rounds you do or whichever design you use it always there's always a leftover somewhere so i'm going to try and come up with a way that um there are the squares but there's a lot of black as well to make up for the width and the height so you know it might be a way for you to amend that to your own shopping bag that you can buy okay so the width of this bag is 40 centimeters or 16 inches the height of the bag is 35 centimeters or 14 inches and the depth is 18 centimeters or 7 inches so you will also need the usual hook that you usually use for the yarn that you're using. So I'm using my three and a half for my Starcraft Special DK. Scissors, needle, of course, to sew in those ends. But then, of course, we are going to have to do some attaching of our squares to our bag. So I have at the ready my hot glue gum. And I also have needle and thread and some feet to attach to my bag. been 
coming up with the craziest color combinations. I love them. I think they are such a bright and cheerful square. So yes, I'm going to be changing color every round and I have my selection of colors here. I started with more colors, I've used some up like this one here, but to be honest, it doesn't matter you know leftovers whatever you have is fine i'm now just sticking with these colors just to keep it a little bit you know coordinated okay so let's get started with the square i am just going to go for any color basically uh you can do blind dip you can just you know doesn't matter the fact that we're going to use one color to bring them all together will make sure that it becomes a whole all in all <laughs> Okay, so I've made my slip knot, I've got my hook in the loop, and we are going to chain four. One, two, three, and four. Then you're going to go back to the first chain, you go into it, and you pick up your yarn again, pull it through that first chain, and pull it through the loop on your hook. You have now made a little hole, and we are going to get started on placing stitches in there. So you do two chains. This one will count as your double crochet. And now you need to do another three double crochets into the circle. So let me get some yarn out and I will show you. Yarn over, insert, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two yarn over, pull through two. So another one. And now we have four double crochets in a row. Now we do a chain one. Now we're going to place another four double crochets into the circle. And that's the third one. And this is the fourth one. I am trying to take the end along as well, so it's already sewn in a little bit. So we have four double crochets there, chain one, and another lot of four double crochets into that same circle. That's three, and there is four. So we now have three lots, so we chain one, and we place another lot of four double crochets. And the last one, there we go. Voila. Okay, now we do a chain one. And then we look at that first cluster of four double crochets that we made. And we see there's two chains here. So we are going to skip those two chains, go under the next V that you see there and you do your slip stitch and that slip stitch will now lie over those two chains. And this is the end of our first round. Cut off the yarn, pull it through and what I do, I quickly go under there, pull the yarn through pull it to the back, then go back to the V where it came out of, put my hook in there so it comes out like the yarn is coming out of that and I pull the yarn back into that through to the back. There we go. And that's an invisible weave-in. So we are now ready for the next colour. And I'm just going to do blind dip so there we go. Aspen. <laughs> nice and bright. Once again, I am making my slip knot. Insert the hook. Close up the loop. And this time we are going to get started with a standing stitch. So I just tend to get started in this corner if I finished here. So that when I come past here, I could possibly take an end along with me. I don't always, I do like sewing them in properly. So we are going to go and look for a chain one space. And in there, 
you're going to do a standing double crochet. Now that was probably a little bit too quick. So to do a standing double crochet, you yarn over before you start and then you act as if you were already crocheting and you just do your double crochet. Now a corner is going to be made up of two double crochets, one chain and two double crochets. So this is the location where you are going to do a corner into that chain one chain space from the previous round. So this is the corner of two double crochets, one chain and two double crochets that you will be making in every corner in this square. So you yarn over, go into that first double crochet straight after the corner and place a double crochet, into the next one for another one, into the next one for another double crochet and into the last one for another one. So make sure that you have done, let me show you like this, hiding the corner, your four double crochets on top of these four that you made in the last row. Then we are at the chain space. So we are doing our corner of two double crochets, one chain and two double crochets. It's quite a solid square and it's quite a square square and I really like it. <laughs> so here, once again, make sure you are doing your four double crochets. Now, the thing is, this one here is where we did that slip stitch on top of the chain. So you have got to make sure you get in there in a sensible place just under that slip stitch to do your double crochet. And then here again, we did that invisible weaving. So just make sure you go in, in a sensible place and you do your four. Don't skip any, okay? So there we go. So that's the four that we are doing. Then here, back to doing our corner of two double crochets, one chain and two double crochets. There we go. And then once again here, back to doing the four. And as you can see, look, I've managed to take along this end. So that will have been sewn in a little bit. I will leave it out though and look at it properly when I am sewing in all my ends to see if it was in fact sewn in properly. And then once again here at the corner chain space, I'm doing my corner. Chain one and the two remaining double crochets. There we go. See, there we are. And now, of course, another four double crochets. So in the first round, you have 20 stitches. And in the second round, you have 36 stitches. So then when you've done your four double crochets, you go and you look at that standing double crochet, which the top closes up for me, but that's okay because we go under the next V and then we lay our slip stitch over that standing double crochet. There we go. And that is the end of the second round. So once again, cut off your yarn pull it through and I try to do that little loop through thing again just to make sure that my end is towards the back and then now we are going to do the third round and to be honest it's the same as the second round but of course each time you will be placing your corner in the corner chain spaces and then you will have more double crochets to place to make sure that you do your side. So before we were doing these four, now we are doing these eight on the side. And this is how your square will grow, of course. So on to the next colour. Same thing make your slip knot, insert your hook and off we go. So 
you yarn over into the corner, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And you do your second double crochet, a chain, and then the two next double crochets. There we go. And off you go again now finding your double crochets. So make sure you do the first one, second one, and so on. When you get to the corner, you do your corner. And of course, here where you have sewn in the end or brought it to the back, at least make sure that you get into the stitches here at a sensible location and that you do do them one for each of those stitches. OK, it might not be so clear a V that you have to use there, but still do it because, you know, there is a stitch there that needs that double crochet placed on top. And off we go. So I'm just doing the last stitch here, skipping the standing double crochet, going under the next V there and doing my slip stitch. There we go. And cutting off the yarn. Voila. And bringing it to the back. And of course, I'm already thinking of which colour I'm going to be using next. Oh, I've had such great fun doing these squares because, of course, it's great to be able to play with colour, knowing that, you know, it's just going to be all right in the end anyway. So there we go. So that's our three rounds. Oh, what shall I do? This tomato here? I think so. Or this one. Oh, decisions. Yes, the tomato, I think, because I haven't got many with the larger round of tomato yet starting in a corner yep this one here and doing our corner then making sure you place a double crochet on top of every double crochet And I'm just doing the last stitch once again, doing that slip stitch in that first V that we encounter. So here we go. That is our square. So cut off the yarn. You will have to sew in the ends. My squares do buckle a little bit, but if you just pull them like this, flatten them, they are perfectly all right. So you will have to make 24 squares. first panel. This is a selection of nine squares which I have put in this order which I would like to crochet together. I'm going to use black yarn and my three and a half that I used obviously for making the squares. I'm going to do a simple join of single crochets in the inner loops and we're going to go and do the lines like this and like this and then the vertical ones like so and so making sure you have all your squares facing up we're going to get started with these two squares here and you hold them together like this so let's get started so you make your slip knot insert your hook and just to get started we're going to do just a chain then you go to your squares. So like I said, the good sides out. We're looking at this. So you're going to find the V of the corner, find the outside strand and then here as well. Find the V of the corner and you use the inside strand. So you've got the inner strands of both V's 
and then you pull through the black yarn and you do a single crochet now make sure that's nice and loose so that when you place your squares flat they don't pucker up and then all you keep doing is picking up the inner v's of your strand so you've got your v here and then you have to tilt your work to see the v there so you're going to be picking up this strand tilting making sure you see the next unused this is used this is the unused one and you pick that one up and you do your single crochet and this is how you work your way all along these two squares and then once you get to the end you work until you have used the corner one again so let me just show you what it looks like when you hold them flat like this see so there is a ridge there and that's fine and because i've worked you know loosely it's okay i can still place my squares nicely flat next to each other like this so i will meet you at the end here I've just made it to the end of this side here and here now I'm doing my chain of that little corner there and then on the other side as well I am picking up the little V, the little inner strand of the corner one as well. So you do your single crochet here. These are the stitches that you will use going the other way as well so you will use the corner ones twice so once in both directions then you're going to do a chain just so that you bridge to go to the next squares then you pick up your next squares and you're going to just start doing exactly the same thing as we were before so you pick up your work here find that little corner one there we go find the corner one on this side where am I oh yes here voila and you do your single crochets and off we go so you'll have to do two horizontal lines like this and two vertical ones so make sure that your squares that you have here don't get twisted around okay so put it down before you add the others or put it down before you start adding this row here just to make sure that these v's are still running nicely and so off we go with the rest of our stitches and of course you do the same thing when you get to the end now when you've done your last stitch of the row you do a chain and you cut off your yarn there we go So now we're ready for the third row. So you take your square and you hold it like this and you work your way all along. So now I've finished my two horizontal lines. Now I'm going to turn it and do another two lines here. Of course, it's a little bit easier now because it's all already attached. But you just need to pay attention here where you're just going to do a chain to go over to the next one really it's not hard it's the same thing again so you find the corner ones find the inner loops and you do your single crochets now when you get to the corners you are going to make sure you do those corners again so the ones that have been used you're going to use those again so here i've just got one more stitch to do before the corner one so there we go that one then i you see that these two corner ones have been used but that's okay i go into them again and into them again and i use them again then i do a chain which will just 
bring me over the other seam and then here I am going to go into the corner one and then look for the corner one on the opposite square there voila there we go and off we go again and that is how you are going to continue all along your line so I've just done my second row in the other direction I'm just finishing here with my single crochet in the last one in the corner one and then what you do is you're going to chain one as we have been and then i'm just going to start doing single crochets in the back loop only all around the square that we have just created now there's a couple of reasons why i'm doing this uh, because we want to frame it nicely of course but also because look I have now created the same kind of edge here as I did here so by going round again we will finish all those squares in the same way as we have created them here with that sort of little loop still hanging around so when you get to the corner, you're going to place three single crochets into the back loop of that chain. And that will make a nice corner and it will help you, of course, to make the turn to do the rest of the square. And when you get to a join like this, you use, of course, the stitch before it. Then you use the corner stitch that you have already used. So you place a single crochet in there. I make sure that the end is towards the back. Then depending on the distance, you could do a chain or you could go straight and do a single crochet in the next one. So it just depends on how wide it is here. If you do do a chain, do it everywhere. If you don't, then don't. And then just, you know, find the back loops again and continue placing your single crochets. I will see you when you have finished this round of single crochets around your square. Just doing my last stitch here. So into that corner one and then of course here. I just look for the first single crochet that I did and I go into it and I do a slip stitch. I know black, you know, you can't see very well, but never mind. <laughs> I do think it's brought out the colors using the black for the, uh, you know, the framing almost. So I haven't cut this off just yet because let me bring in my bag. Let me show you a little bit higher up. Okay, so we've got the shopping bag. Obviously, I don't know what size you are going to have, but I have made all these panels now, right? So this one would be for the front. And as you can see, no, you can't see. <laughs> um, you know, it doesn't quite fit. So I was wondering, Yes, maybe if I move this all across, there would be another possibility for another row. Mm, it's already too big there. But then again, you have here, you know, the top. And for my eye, that would not just look right. That wouldn't sort of, yeah. And also having four rows maybe if I did five rows it would have been bigger it would have worked out one two three. but then that means you have more row. so you know it's a consideration of how you want to do this now the thing is my logic here is the following so we've got the colorful panel and now I'm going to go round it again with black with a double crochet and I'm going to make the square bigger so that it fits as big as possible and then I would do two more sides maybe so you know what I'm trying to do here is give you a way of doing this so you can make this as well for whichever bag you have so here again 
I can see that, goodness, I've got to go even higher. Um, let me put it this way. If I was to put, yeah, so look, here I'm doing, that would be one row of double crochets and one here. But here I think I would need two. So if I did one round of double crochets and then just here did a couple more and then here did a couple more, that would fill up that side nicely. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just use uh, black double crochets and I'm going to turn it into the shape, into the size that I need for the side of my bag. Two chains into the first V and I'm just doing a round of double crochets. And of course here it's just finding the Vs, which of course with black, <laughs> I chose, do you know, I've not used black that often and I do think it brings out the colours if you use it like this with bright colours and yeah, I hope you will try to use it. So when you get to the corner, uh, you decide which one of those three single crochets that you did in the corner is the middle one. I think it is this one. So in there, I'm going to do two double crochets, one chain and two double crochets. So the same type of corner that we did in the square. And I think that will be enough for us to make the turn to make a corner. Look, that's fine. Okay, so I will see you when you have got your panels ready for assembly on the bag. So I've got nine squares together, assembled with single crochets. Then I did a round of single crochets around them. Then I did two rounds of double crochets. And then on each side, I did one row of double crochets. So it's a little bit wider than its high, but this is the size that I think will fit my bag. So with the black rows of double crochets you can then make sure that it's the size of the shopping bag that you have so i have also of course made a second panel of this for the other side of my bag and then i have made side panels so these were the three squares that i put together here as well i did the assembly then I did one round of single crochets then two rounds of double crochets and then as well here I needed to do on each side a row of double crochets so these are all the panels for the bag itself and then of course we need a base as well for the bag which I have also made out of black double crochets and I measured, let me just show you, I measured the width here. So I counted the stitches and I made sure I had the same amount. Of course, you have a stitch here which lies in the different direction, but that's fine. I just counted two stitches for that. So this should tally up. And then, of course, the height of this particular panel is going to be the height width of the side panel so i made sure this is going to tally up as well so basically this is just a chain for me these were 60 stitches so a chain of 60 then you start with chaining two double crochet chaining two turn double crochet all the way okay and i think i did about um 14 rows of this so that was the height that i then needed for 
the width of this panel here. So now we are going to start assembling. So I'm going to do single crochets and I'm going to assemble my panels together like so and then make a bag and then shove the jute bag into it. <laughs> okay, I shall be there to show you. So here you can see I have crocheted together my two front panels and each time in between is a side panel. So to sew two panels together, well better, to crochet two panels together, you make your slip knot, you insert your hook and I've got here a side panel and a front panel and both have the good sides towards the top and I just pick them up like this and I'm going to make the stitches tally up. Now the thing is, yes you can't see very well because it's black and also I can't see very well because it's black so I would say just do your best to try and pick up the corner one. I am picking up two strands here and then here as well. I'm trying to pick up two strands just because that is stronger. When you pick up the back loop only, um, very often, you know, that loop will stretch. You might have noticed that happening here. So do try here to make sure you do pick up the V completely, just because this is your outer of your bag. This is what it's keeping it together. And nobody's going to see that, to be honest. Um, so this will give us a nice edge as well to our little bag. So, basically, all I'm doing is making sure I pick up the four strands, so two on this side, and then going over to the other panel, and two on there, and then I do my single crochet. And this is how you're going to make the tube kind of thing of the four panels. And then, of course, as well, you're going to have to put the base in, but I'll be back for that. So just single crochets from the start to the end of the row. So here I am at the end of sewing in my base, or better, crocheting in my base with single crochets. So I've just started on the corner here, and I've been picking up the two strands of each V on each side. So that worked really well. So now I'm here where my side is and of course now I am going to be sewing on my side, onto the side. Here I don't have the V's to pick up, I do here, so I'm just going to try my best here. I'm just going to see, you know, corresponding strands to be picked up on this piece here where we don't have the V's readily available. I just work my way around the corner here and it's okay. I mean, it is black, so it's not going to be all that obvious. Just try and, you know, put in as many stitches as you think you need to make sure that it's going to be nice and sturdy. See, there's a, 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 a double crochet here, so I am going to do two stitches in there then pick up something f a little bit further along just so that I travel onwards. I mean, the assembly now, really, it's not hard. It's just a little bit of patience to make sure you do it you know, well at a same distance all the time. And, you know, so you secure your whole bag, really. So I will be back when I have finished making my bag shape out of my panels. Now, when you get to the corner of your base, make sure, of course, that you get to the corner of your panel. So I have had to fudge one or two stitches here. So using the same stitch twice on one side 
to make it all work out but that's fine I mean it's been minimal just one stitch and then here for the corner itself you don't have to do extra stitches like you usually do for a corner you just what I do here I go into that seam that we created by putting the two panels together then I sort of go over to the corner of the base panel and I just try to get two edge strands whichever ones they are and I just do a single crochet just carefully going through your fabric here yeah there we go see and that way then on to the next panel and on to the other side of your base panel here and off you go there we go see so I've turned I've made the corner and it's looking neat Am I using the same stitch here? Yes, because of course this one is lying sideways. So two single crochets over the length of that double crochet is fine. Then here we have a V to pick up. And then once again here I have the sides of my double crochet. So once again, just try and pick up sensible strands at regular intervals. And it's worth taking your time to do this because, of course, this is the finish of your bag. This is putting it together, making sure it's looking nice. this I have made a bag out of my cover so I've got my base and I've got my four sides so now it's time to try and get the cover onto my bag so let's see if we can do that so just Place your bag. I'm just putting it in flat for now and then I'm going to go into it, open up with your hands and then just bring the corners onto the corners. There we go. And here the sides onto there. Yeah, look at that. It does fit. So I've turned my cover inside out and I've got my bag base here. So I'm going to put this like that. So of course with hot glue you have to be quick. So I'm making sure that I've got my edge along my side of the bag. So the crocheted edge here is running all along the side of the bag. Now I'm folding that back slightly. And then I'm going to put hot glue and then go back in and then just fold it down where you have peeled it back slightly. There we go. And we do all along here just so that we have established some sort of start to yeah to fixing it to the bag and it's in the right position there we go yeah let's have a look see look
check to make sure you have your edge here on the edge of the bag as well. So right, I have managed to hot glue my bag into my cover, so the cover around the bag, so to speak. So I've got hot glue in between here, obviously, in all kinds of places. So yeah, once I did the base, I then started with the front, always making sure that you have those single crochet ridges on your edges of your ute bag. And there we go. So now I'm going to use my black thread and a needle just to go around the top edge of my bag. So that way it will be finished really nice and neatly. Just push it through the crochet and then gently push it through the bag. There we go. Then turn it over and now I can open it up. One to each side. project in which we can show off our skill to the outside world. This bag surely is going to be my new shopping bag for when I walk into town to buy my groceries. While we were at the show I received a number of compliments of people who really liked my bag. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.